We are recording. Can anyone record a shear? Record it to the cloud. Right. Hey. Um, we're holding Daf Chav Dalit. That's the bottom of Daf Chav Gimel Amid Beis, where the new Patrick starts. Begging the Shabbat night. Good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon. Dr. Mishnah. Good afternoon, indeed. It's Chav Gimel Ahmed Beis on the bottom, new Patek. The Mishnah says, Arusa v'shem eres yavam le'sheisos le'neit v'sksuba. And Arusa, that's if she's betrothed, it means she has Kedushin, but they didn't yet get married under the Chuppah. Or she Yavam, that's, the, that's when the brother passes away without children and the, she's meant to brother, marry his brother, but she hasn't yet married his brother. And in the interim, either between the Ederson and the Nesuin, or between the death of the brother and the marriage to the other brother, uh, she is suspected of committing adultery. So she cannot drink, but she loses her ksuba. If she was warned and she violated the warning, she loses her ksuba. Shanamar, how do we know that she doesn't drink? Because it says in the Pasuk, Asha tista isha tachas isha. A woman strays under the jurisdiction of her husband. In other words, she's under the, under the uh, dominion of her husband at the time. So the words tachas isha exclude arusa neshemeres yavam. She's not tachas isha. And therefore, the waters of Saita do not work for her. Therefore, she doesn't drink them. Almana l'kayin gadol. If an almana is married to a kayin gadol, which she shouldn't be, it's forbidden. It's a forbidden marriage. Grusha v'chalutza l'kayin hediyet, or a grusha or chalutza married to an ordinary kayin. Mamzeres or nesina liyisrael, a mamzeres or nesina is from the givaynim. The David Amalek asked them to marry into the Jewish people. So, if a mamzeres or a nesina marries a proper yid. Bas Yisrael, a Mamzer or a Nosin, or a Jewish girl marries a Mamzer or a Nosin. So all these cases, the Kedushin is Chal, but it's, it's, it's forbidden. In all these cases, she doesn't drink the waters of Saita, but she loses her Ksuba. In the case where she was warned that she violated the warning, she loses her Ksuba. The following cases are also, she doesn't, she cannot drink the waters of Saita, but she loses her Ksuba. If she admits that she is defiled, our witnesses came and said that they saw her become defiled. Or she says, I refuse to drink. I don't necessarily admit my guilt, but I refuse to drink. In all these cases, she doesn't drink the waters of Saita and she loses her Ksuba. Um, our baila any mashka. However, what happened in a case where the husband says, I don't want to give her to drink? So she's muchin to drink. She's, she is okay with drinking, but the husband doesn't want to give her to drink. Or if the husband lived with her on the way, and then there's no point in her drinking because the waters won't be effective, and therefore she can't drink. So these cases, she gets, the husband is, has to divorce her and pay her ksuba, and she doesn't drink the waters of Satan. What happens if she's meant to drink the waters of Satan? But before she actually gets to drink the waters of Saita, the husband passes away. So she can't drink it now because the whole purpose of drinking is that she should be permitted to her husband. And because the husband passed away, there's no point in drinking. So the question is, what happens with her ksuba? Do we assume that she's guilty until proven innocent? Or do we assume that she's innocent until proven guilty? Excuse me one second. I'm just going to close the curtains over here. So I'm sorry about that interruption. So, Mesu Baleim Achale Shasuf, the husband died before she actually got to drink the waters of Saita. Beshami says, since she's not going to be drinking, and there's no way to prove her guilt, 
So from the husband's inheritance, she gets a ksuba because she's innocent until proven guilty. And in her innocence, she's entitled to a ksuba. She either drinks or forfeits her ksuba. In other words, obviously, Basil is not recommending that she should drink the waters of Saita for no purpose. It's an expression for saying, since she can't drink to prove her innocence, she forfeits her ksuba. So Basil says she's guilty until proven innocent. Eshamai says she's innocent until proven guilty. The halacha is that it's forbidden to marry a woman who is pregnant from a previous marriage. And it's also forbidden to marry a woman who is nursing a baby from a previous marriage. So you have to wait until she gives birth, and you have to wait 24 months, and only then can you marry her. What happened if a man married a woman who was mu'beres chaveri, she was pregnant from a previous marriage, or she was nursing a baby from a previous marriage? So being that this marriage is a forbidden marriage, he's not allowed to marry a woman in such a state. So loishay says, if she became a seita, loishay says, loishay says, loishay so we treat it the same as the Mamzeres and the Sinali Yisro, and she cannot drink the waters of Saita, and she forfeits her Ksuba. Divri Rameir, that's the opinion of Rameir. The Chachamim say, Yochelu lafrisho lachzira lachazma. Chachamim say, this should not be treated like a proper forbidden marriage, because in the cases of the forbidden marriages that we spoke about before, she's forbidden point blank. Nothing can change. But over here, in essence, he can separate from her and, and go back to her at a later date. In other words, once she is finished nursing the baby from the previous marriage, she's permitted to him. So it's only a time question. So therefore, according to the Chachamim, she can drink the waters of Saita. She's not considered a forbidden, this is not considered a forbidden marriage, and she can drink the waters of Saita. Because he can separate from her and then take her back at a later date. Islandess. An islandess is a woman who has a condition where, the, where her womanhood doesn't actually develop properly, she can't have children, and she doesn't have the normal features of a healthy woman. Uskena, or an older woman who is too old to have children. Or a woman who cannot, we know that she cannot have children. So in all these three cases, a man who is young and capable of fathering children is forbidden to marry any of these three cases. He's not allowed to marry an islandess, he's not allowed to marry a skena, and he's not allowed to marry an eneru The reason being, because he has a mitzvah of pruervu, he has a mitzvah to be fruitful and multiply, and this woman is going to prevent him from fulfilling the mitzvah. So therefore, he has to marry a woman that can have children and not a woman that cannot have children. So what happens in a case where he did marry an islandess or a skena or an and she became a seita? So we treat it, according to the Tanakhama, like any other forbidden marriage. So she forfeits her ksuba, but she cannot drink the waters of seita. What happened if the young man had already uh, um, had the uh, mitzvah, completed the, the mitzvah of uh, uh, and and um, uh, He's got children, and his wife dies. Is he allowed to marry any of these three cases? Yes. Rashi says, and the she'ener u'yo leilid. If you look at the Rashi she'ener u'yo leilid, Rashi says she'shasas case ikrin. She'ener u'yo leilid means a woman who has medically been prevented from having children. Va'asuris l'kaima l'mishe'en le'bonim. She's only forbidden for someone who has no children. Ah. Stop you saw a period of Ivya because you didn't recommend it to be fruitful and multiply. But if he has children already, then the prohibition doesn't apply. That's what, it, I, that's what Rashi's words imply. He says, Asura lakaima lamisha ain't lebanim. Only someone who doesn't have children is allowed to keep such a wife. Thank you. So the Tanakhama says that an island is a skein of shein re leilid, le netlis tsuba vleisha. So we treat her like a forbidden marriage. And just like when the cases of the forbidden marriages that we had before, she doesn't drink the waters of Saita, and she loses her ksuba. Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Lazar disagrees, and he says, Since he's able to marry another wife who is able to have children, 
and have children from the other wife. And we just said that if he has children, there's no problem. So the, pro the prohibition of a young man being married to an island is Skena, or an Einar or a is only if he doesn't have another wife. But since he's, he can marry another wife and have children from the other wife, and, that, and then this, this wife will no longer be forbidden to him. So therefore, she can drink the waters of Saita, and we treat her like a, a, like a kosher wife. Sharkal Hanashim, what about an ordinary, healthy wife, a regular woman, a shesis, a lenetus tzub? She has a choice to drink the waters of Saita or to forfeit her tzub. Says the Mishnah further, Aishas Kayin, the wife of a Kayin, Shaisa can drink the waters of Saita if she's in a case of a suspicious adulteress. And once she drank the waters of Saita and the waters of Saita find her innocent, she is permitted to continue living with her husband, even though he is a Kayin. Aishas Saris, the wife of a Saris. A Saris is someone who is not capable of having children. He doesn't have any of he, he, the various features of manhood are lacking by him. Shaisa. So if she became a Saita, the wife of a Saris, and he was, she was warned and she violated the warning, she drinks the waters of Saita like any other woman. And Rashi says that he only became a Saris after they, he was able to have children. So the Kodma um, Shkivasa Baal Boyel. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. The warning that the husband delivers, saying that you should not seclude yourself with this and this man, if that man is a relative of hers, he could still be warned, she could still be warned not to seclude herself with this relative. And it could be anyone, it could be her father, it could be her brother, anyone, any relative of his. The husband says, I don't want to seclude yourself with this man. And she violated the husband's warning, she becomes a Satan. Chutzman Akotten, the only exception of a child under Bar Mitzvah, and someone who is not a man. And the Gemara is going to discuss in, at length later in the Gemara what exactly the definition of Misha Ena Ish is. The Elusha Bezdin Mekanin Lehem. The following women can become a Saita if Bezdin warns them. And Bezdin actually, if Bezdin sees, or it's brought to Bezdin's attention that this woman is not behaving appropriately, Bezdin will deliver a warning in the place of the husband. Which cases does this apply? Mishin is schadish baila. If the husband became a deaf mute, or he lost his mind, or he was imprisoned. So in all these three cases, Bezdin will take the place of the husband and deliver the warning when and if necessary. Layla hashka isa amru. Now, Bezdin taking the role of the husband and delivering the warning is not in order to be able to give her to drink the waters of Satan, because that would not apply in a case where Bezdin delivered the warning. It only applies where the husband delivered the warning. But the purpose of Bezdin delivering the warning is that if she violates that warning, she will forfeit her ksub. Rabbi says in the case where the husband is in prison, that the warning that's delivered by Bezdin can even be effective to cause her to drink the waters of Satan. But it'll have to wait until the husband comes out of prison, and the husband will be able to take her to the Beis Hamikdash and give her the waters of Saita based on the warning that she received from Bezdin. That concludes the Mishnah, and we're ready to go on to the Gemara now. Frek the Gemara. The first din in the Mishnah was about Arusa v'Shemeres Yavam. That in Arusa, a woman who was betrothed and not yet married, or a Shemeres Yavam, that's her husband died without children, and she's waiting to be, uh, for, for, she's waiting for the brother of the dead husband to be meyabim her. So in, all the, in both these cases, the Mishnah said that she cannot drink the waters of Saita, but she does forfeit her tzum. Are you implying that she does mishnahud leishasya, that she doesn't drink the waters of Saita, but a, but a, a warning can be delivered by the Arus or by the, by the uh, Yavam who hasn't yet married her? Where do we know this from? It says in the Pasuk, in the beginning of Pasha Saita, speak to the Bnei Yisrael and say to them. So we have a double Lashon here. A double Lashon usually comes to include something more. So this extra Pasuk, comes to include an Arusa and a Shemeres Yavam for warning. That an Arus, if he just betrothed her, he didn't yet marry her, he can, he can warn her if he sees her misbehaving. 
And the same applies to the brother-in-law who hasn't yet married her. And our Mishnah follows the opinion of Rabbi Yenison. Tanya, we learned Nebraisa, Tachas Isheikh, it says in the Parsha Saita, Tachas Isheikh, under the, uh, the dominion of your husband. Krat la Rusa. So the word Tachas Isheikh comes to exclude an Arusa who's just betrothed because she hasn't yet married the husband. Yachal Shani Meitzi, Afshemeres Yavam. So you might think that this should exclude also a Shemeres Yavam because she hasn't yet married the Yavam. So it says at the beginning of the parish, ish, ish, kisiste, ish, the double ush and ish comes to be marbe something, comes to include something more. It comes to include not only a husband can give a warning, but the brother in law who is waiting to marry the sister in law can also deliver a warning and it's effective. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yashia. So Rabbi Yashia holds that by an arus and an arusa, there is no halacha of saita whatsoever. And by a, 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 by a yavama, and a, a yashmeris yavam, and, and, and the yavam, there is a halacha of Saita. Rabbi Yenison Eimer, Rabbi Yenison disagrees. He says, Tachas Isheich, Prat Lashemeres Yavam. When it says, Tachas Isheich, under your husband, in other words, the, the, the dinim of Saita only apply when she's married to the husband. But a Shemeres Yavam who's not married yet to the Yavam would be excluded. Oitzi Shemeres Yavam, Malayetzi Esarusa. Should I exclude Shemeres Yavam and not exclude an Arusa? Talmud Leimar, Ashatista Isha Tachas Isha. So we have a pasuk that says Ashatiste isha tachas isha. So besides the pasuk tachas isheich, we have a pasuk Ashatiste isha tachas isha, which prat larusa comes to exclude an arusa as well. So the way of thinking here is different by Rabbi Yenison than it is by Rabbi Ashia, because Rabbi Ashia, when he had one pasuk, he used it to exclude an arusa. He didn't use it to exclude a shemeres yavam. By Rabbi Yenison, the first thing he did when he had a Pasuk is he excluded immediately Shemeres Yavam, and then only when he had another Pasuk did he exclude an Arusa as well. So, Mar Alimele Arusa. One holds that an Arusa is more svara to say that she should be considered like a regular wife, the Kedusha Didei. Because Alimo means strong, stronger? Called, called the Alim Gvar. So, Mara Limale Arusa, one holds that Arusa is more svara to say that she should be the same as a regular wife, the Kedusha Di Day, because it's his Kedusha, he gave her Kedusha. The Seiklin Al Yode, and if she's Mazana, she gets Skila. Mara Limale Shemeres Yavam, and the other svara holds, the other opinion holds that Shemeres Yavam is stronger, Shemeres Yavam is more similar to a regular wife, because by Shemeres Yavam, she's not lacking Chupa. Shemeres Yavam, Yahayavama, the first mission in Kedusha says, Ayavama Niknes Bebiya. There's no preliminary uh, arrangements. So by a, by, by a uh, an arusa, he can't live with her until this chupa. But a yavama niknas bebiya. So there's no, there's no, la, there, we, she's not lacking mesira lechupa. Therefore, according to him, she is more similar to a regular wife. So therefore, the Gemara says that our Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Yenison, because Rabbi Yenison excludes both an arusa and a shemeres yavam. And that's why our Mishnah says that there's no drinking of the waters of Saita by an Arusa by Shemeres Yavam. Frek the Gemara of Rabbi Yenison, Hai Ish Ish by According to Rabbi Yenison, who excludes both an Arusa and a Shemeres Yavam from drinking, what does he do with the Pasuk Ish Ish, which comes to obviously include something more than we, knew, than we thought? He uses ish ish to include the wife of a deaf mute, the wife of a shaita whose mind is not working properly, and the wife of a shimum. Rashi says shimum is lakoi betimun leif, a person who is smitten with, um, he's not too clever, he doesn't really know what's going on. So in these cases, as we said in the Mishnah, that Bezdin would stand in the place of the, of the husband and deliver the warning. So ish ish comes to include also these cases of an Eish Shchedish, an Eish Shait, an Eish Shimu. Prek the Gemara of Rabbi Yashia, Tachas Isha, Mayavid. If you remember, Rabbi Yenison excluded one from Tachas Isheich and one from Tachas Isha. Rabbi Yashia only excluded from Tachas Isheich. What does he do with Tachas Isha? And for the Gemara, Mebaile, the Hakish Isha, Isha, the Isha, the Isha. He uses the word Tachas Isha for a Hekish, to compare the man to the woman and the woman to the man. There's a b'raise towards the end of this peirik 
where we learn that all the dinim that apply to the man apply to the woman, all the dinim that apply to the woman apply to the man, and over there the Braise will enumerate which dinim we're referring to. But in any case, we need the Pasuk Tachas Isha to tell you that there is a hekish of Ish le Isha and Isha le Ish. So why do we say that a that an arusa and a shemeres yavam cannot drink, or according to one opinion, um, according to one opinion, just one of them cannot drink? It's It's only because these psukim come to exclude them. Otherwise, I would have thought that an arusa can drink. When Rab Acher Bar Chanina came, he came from the south. He brought a brice in his hand, which said, It says that no man has lived with you besides your husband. So he said, the brice says that from the Pasuk, we derive that the whole concept of Saita can only exist when the Baal lived with her. The husband lived with her before the Baal did. But if the Baal lived with her before the adulterer lived with her before the husband, then the whole din of Saita doesn't apply. So in a case of an Arusa and a Shemeres Yavam, she hasn't lived with her husband yet. So why would we think that the dinam of Saita would apply at all, that we need to have Psukim to exclude them? The Pasuk Mibalada Yishech can already tell me enough that any, in any case where she hasn't yet lived with the husband, the dinam of Saita don't apply. It's possible, there could be a case where the Arus, against the Halacha, lived with her before they were married. So they were already betrothed to each other. He already gave her Kedushan, but they hadn't been Chuppah yet. And the Arus lived with her, and therefore it's called Mashchivas Baal, Mashchivas Baal. And I guess he would be called Sidat Baal because he could be Koine her Babia. The Baal, because he's the one who gave her Kedushin, and the Isser of her being Mizanda is because of his Kedushin. So, and he's warning her not to be Nister with this man because it's in the, in, in, it stands in the way of the Kedushin that he gave her. So he's considered the Baal as far as the Dinim of Saita are concerned. But the problem was that if he's a proper Arus and she's a proper Arusa, which means they never lived together, then how could it not called Mashkivas Baal Mashkivas Baal? So the Gemara says it's possible that he lived with her against the Halacha. Yeah. Says the Gemara, the Kavasa Gavi Shemeres Yavam. So what would be the equivalent to that in the case of Shemeres Yavam? You'd have to say that the brother in law lived with her after the husband's death before he actually performed evil. So you're going to call her a Shemeres Yavam? Then she's a proper wife. How does a Shemeres Yavam become a wife? Through Bia. So if the Yavam lived with her before the Yibum took place, that's the Yibum. And this is especially a problem according to Rav, who says that in such a circumstance <clears throat> where the husband, where the Yavam lived with the Yavama, and, with, and it was not for the intention of Yibum. He's acquired her for all purposes. She's fully his wife. So if she's fully his wife, then she's no longer a Shemeres Yavam. So if, she, if he didn't live with her, then it's no, there was no Shivas, Kadma Shivas, Baal Shivas, Baal, she can't become a Saita. And if he didn't live with her, if, if, he, if he didn't live with her, there's no Kadma Shivas, Baal Shivas, Baal, she can't become a Saita. And if he did live with her, then she's not a Shemeres Yavam anymore, then she's his proper wife. So how could there be a case of Shemeres Yavam becoming a Saita? Going back to the question we asked before in the Gemara, why do we need a Pasuk to exclude her? It's just not possible for, for Shemeres Yavam to become a Saita because there's no Kod Meshkivah's Baal, Meshkivah's Baal. And if there is Kod Meshkivah's Baal, Meshkivah's Baal, she's not a Shemeres Yavam anymore. She's a proper wife. Zak the Gemara Kishmul. So we'll have to go according to Shmuel, not like Rav who says Kanal Akel. We'll have to go according to Shmuel. Damar like Kanal with Barim Hamurim B'Parshim. Shmuel says that if the Yavam lived with the Yavama and it was not for the intention of Yibum, he only acquires her in connection with certain halachas that are enumerated in the Parsha. Let's learn that. Look at the Rashi Kishmuel right on the side. Rashi says Kishmuel Hada Asa Kral Lemuti Kishmuel. The fact that we need a pasuk to exclude a Shemeres Yavam from the laws of Saita goes according to Shmuel. 
Amar Lekona Ladwanam Amun of Parsha. Shmuel says that if the Yavam lived with the Yavam and it was not with the intention of performing the mitzvah of Yibam, he wasn't intending to marry her through this Bia. So he only acquires her for certain halachas. Those things that are mentioned specifically in the Pasha of Yavama. And he gets the brother's share in the inheritance. That he's going to have to give her a get. The fact that a Yavam can acquire a Yavama just with, a, with, with, with any Bia, we learn from the Pasuk Yavama, Yavama 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 it doesn't say that the brother-in-law should take her as a wife. It just says he should live with her. By doing so, he automatically takes her as a wife. Rashmina, this Basak teaches us, that the, the Bia is already the marriage. For those things that are mentioned in the Pasuk, the Teira, the Teira it includes and in, through such a marriage. But for other matters, it's not considered a proper marriage. What does, what does the parsha say? She's absolved from chlitza through this yibum, and that the, um, the brother, the, the, one who performed, the one who lived with her, he inherits the, the, the property of his brother. And the other brothers don't get any share anymore. But for other matters, she's not considered his wife. So for all practical purposes, they're not married. Right. And therefore, she's still considered a Shemedes Yavam. And that can explain how it's possible to have a Shemedes Yavam where Kadma Shchivas Baal Shchivas Baal. If that's the case, then Rav and Shmuel are not an original Machlaikas. Because according to the Biyashi, uh, who says that a Shemedes, what did Rabbi Ashiya say, if you remember right, in the beginning of the Gemara? Rabbi Ashiya said that we have a Pasuk to exclude Shemedes Yava, that we include Shemedes Yava, in, in Ish Ish includes Shemedes Yava in the Dinam of Saita. Right? How can a Shemedes Yava be included into the Dinam of Saita? How can there be a Shemedes Yava of Saita? The only way there can be a Shemedes Yava of Saita is if you hold like Shmuel, that like Kanel, Ladvar, Mamun, and Beparsha, so they were talking about this, the, the Yava lived with her, without, not with the intention of marrying her. And she's still considered a Shemedes Yavam. And um, Rabbi Yenison, who excludes the Shemedes, who, who, Rabbi Yenison, who holds that uh, Shemedes Yavam is excluded from, from, uh, from uh, he holds that uh, Shemedes Yavam is excluded from the Dinam of Saita. Both right. are excluded. No, according to Rabbi Yashia, yeah, the only, is, according to Rabbi Yashia, only Daruso is excluded, <coughs> and Rabbi Yenison excludes both. Yes. So, but as, as far as we're, we're concerned right now with the Shemedes Yavam. Shemedes Yavam, according to uh, Rabbi Yashia, would be included, and according to Rabbi Yenison, be excluded. So why do Rabbi and Shmuel bother having a machleikis, whether Kona Lakel or Kona Ludvarim Amur and Beparsha, it should have said that Rav the Amr Kedav Yashia, Shmuel the Amr Kedav Yenison. Rav goes according to the Yashia, <coughs> Shmuel goes according to the Yenison. Amr Lach Rav, so Rav will answer. Not the Amri Afilu the Rabbi Yenison. I could say my position that a, a Yavam who lived with a Yavama, not with the intention of Yibum, is kind to her for all matters. She becomes his proper wife. I could say that even according to the Yenison. Me the Itzdech Kral the Muuta. From the fact that we need a pasuk to exclude the Shemeres Yavam from the dinim of Saita, Miklal the Ishtem al that's itself a proof that she's a proper wife. Because or else, why would you need a pasuk to exclude her? Shmuel Amar and Shmuel would say, I know the Amri Afil Lerav Yashia. I can say my position that she, he's only kind to her, Ladvar Mamur of Parshia, even according to the Yashia, who says that a Shemeres Yavam is included in the dinim of Saita. Why? It's the Kral since we need a pasuk to include her. If she's a proper wife, then you don't need a pasuk. She's like any other wife. Just like any wife is included in the dinim of Saita, this woman would also be included in the dinim of Saita. Since we need a special pasuk to include her, the cloud, the love ishte he cloud. That's a proof that she's not his wife yet. And therefore, we need a special pasuk to say that even in a case where Kadma Shkivas Baal, Shkivas Baal, even if the Yavam already lived with her, she, we need a special pasuk to include her into the dinim of Saita, because otherwise we would not consider her a candidate to become a Saita, because she's not his proper wife. So 
the machlekes of Rabbi Shmuel is not necessarily um, tied up with the machlekes of Rabbi Yenis and Rabbi Yashia. You can actually do it either way. You could say that they follow, as we thought, that the Rav follows Rabbi Yenis and Shmuel and the other, or we could say that it's the other way around. They're both a possibility. And this concludes our, our, our uh, blot. Mir Sashem to be continued tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Mir Sashem. Hatzlocha Rabbah to everyone. Pleasure. Rabbi Yenison brought two Tukim. He brought Tachat Isheikh and Ashutisti Isha Tachat Isheikh. Isha. But then when we asked Rabbi Yashia, we only answered one. We said what he does with Tachat Isha. He doesn't ask about Tachat Isheikh. Why? Didn't he exclude from Tachat Isheikh one? He used Ish Ish. Ish Ish was to Mibarbe. But Tachat Isheikh Prat La Rusa. Rabbi Yashi in the beginning of the Bray says, it's Tachas Yishech Prat La'arusa. And Isha Tachas Isha is for something else at the end of the... I the Gemara asked, what does Rabbi Yashi do with Tachas Isha? And he says, L'Hakish Isha L'Isha, Isha L'Isha. Is that right? Matul Sishtim? At the very beginning of the Bray the Bray starts off, Tadun Abban, and Dabla B'nei Yisrael Marat Aleim, the Rabbi Yisrael Marat Aleim, sorry, the, the, the next price, the Tanya, Tachas Ishek, Prat Larus. Okay, fine, 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 got it. Okay? Very good. Thank you. Hold to. Pleasure.